Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Fabrication Basics. Uh, this week we're going to answer a basic fabrication question, and that is, what's faster, TIG welding or MIG welding? I think we all know the answer is MIG welding, but exactly how much faster it is, I don't really know. I've never timed it. Uh, so it'll be interesting and, and to see how this uh, works out. Uh, now I will say that I'm inexperienced at out of position TIG welding, so um, you know what we're going to do is, is basically weld all these in the uh, you know just the standard I don't know the nomenclature of it standard horizontal position uh, and we'll do the MIG in the same position as well even though I'm more comfortable and out of position with MIG um, I'm not with TIG but to make the, com the comparison fair we're going to do it that way um, so first of all we're going to um, do the TIG welding first and the machine setup is going to be uh, the Eastwood TIG 200 which is the machine I have and um, we're going to set it on about 80 amps this is 14 gauge tubing start at 80 amps and uh, work from there and then uh, when we get this finished up I'll switch to the MIG and I'll tell you about the setup on the machine for that um, so uh, I'm going to fast forward through this but you'll notice that the stopwatch I'm going to overlay uh, is going to fast forward at the same pace the video is fast forwarding at so the stopwatch will be collecting actual time and as soon as the uh, the welding starts uh, which will be after the initial clamp up I'll do the same process for both and try to keep it as fair as possible so let's get started All right, so you saw we got the TIG finished up there. That went pretty good. Didn't have any issues with uh, tungsten resharpening, which could slow it down, which is part of the process, uh, but we never contaminated it, so we didn't have to do that. Uh, just like the TIG, I'm starting the MIG with a fresh, clean uh, clamp up. Uh, had a fresh tungsten grind. I've got my um, cup, or I don't know what you call it, I think, cap uh, cleaned up and um, so we're gonna get get going on this and I'm gonna do the same process in the same order uh, to the extent that I can uh, as I do on the other to try to try to make a comparison uh, the welder settings we've got it on the high end of the 14 gauge and we got the wire speed set on um, on auto set so it's just gonna let the machine do the work on that um, and on this we're gonna zip across here pretty quick I'm not gonna you know try to spend a lot of time going back and forth blending the edges because the gaps are super tight and I think we can just zip right across there and get a clean weld and uh, with it on the hot side of the the setting um, you know we don't want to go uh, lollygagging around and go too slow anyway so all right so we'll uh, get this going and start the timer on this as soon as I hit the first tack uh, just like the two here we go All right, well, we're all finished up here. Um, 
That was a pretty fun little exercise. You guys probably recognize these uh, from the Metal Work Monday from last night. If you didn't see that Metal Work Monday, and this is sometime in the future, I'm going to put a link here. You can check that out. These are going on these heavy-duty machine dollies that we built. Um, but you could clearly see the MIG was seven minutes. I'm sorry, the TIG was seven minutes and 33 seconds, and uh, the MIG was three minutes and 42 seconds. So. Uh, more than uh, twice as fast to do the MIG uh, than the TIG. Um, but I'm showing you a close-up of the, of the welds. You can see the difference in the two. The, the TIG is a lot cleaner. Um, I probably weld the TIG a little bit too hot on this. I always try to go a little bit hotter and try to go faster. Um, but with a TIG, I don't always go faster. Um, and I end up with a little bit, probably too hot of a weld. But um, it still looks pretty good nonetheless. Um, and you can see the MIG welds pretty good too. Uh, you know, you can just clearly see the difference a lot uh, more uh, spatter and soot and just, you know, stuff in the weld. Um, and, and it's got a little bit higher of a stack on the bead there too. And I don't know if you, you guys have ever ground a TIG weld compared to a MIG weld. It's like night and day. The MIG weld or the TIG weld grinds off really easy, quick, uh, you know the the mig welding process actually hardens the metal and the welds are really hard if you've ever tried to drill through one so um the tig you know part of what slows me down on that i was just going to mention you probably noticed it in the video i noticed it doing the editing on it is just a lot of fidgeting around screwing around with the torch angle and getting my rod right and you know it's just a lot of screwing around with the mig it's just go right to it and bam so a lot of advantages to the MIG. So it'd be interesting to hear, hear interested to hear what you guys have to think. Uh, if you've never TIG welded before, man, you're missing out. It's a lot of fun. It takes a little bit of uh, you know work to kind of get yourself to a position where you can do it pretty decently. Um, but it's not as hard as some people you know make it out to be. And uh, and these people that do the real stacking of dimes, I mean. These are rare people. The regular, like I know a lot of fabricators out there that you know build race car chassis and things like that, and they're not, they can't stack dimes. They can do good TIG welding with you know good strong welds, good penetration, but they are not the beautiful stack of dimes. I know at least three guys that have built some really you know high end uh, you know pro mods things like that. They can't stack dimes. Uh, they do nice welds. I'm not trying to, to, to dog them or anything like that. But these people that stack dimes and you have that in your mind that that's what I want to do. Um, there's very few people that can do it uh, and do it at that level. Um, just takes a lot of consistency and practice and everything about what you have to do is got to be perfectly consistent to get those dimes to flow out there like that. So anyway, I'm on a rant and rambling here. Uh, another fabrication basics. Hopefully you guys are interested in seeing these and they're somewhat entertaining and just by the way I wanted to mention that this I'm not an experienced welder I'm not teaching you how to weld this is not what this is about this is more of just sharing taking you along with what I'm working on it's out here 10 o'clock at night I'm working on some stuff so I thought I'd bring you along um, and also from a safety point of view I don't always follow the, the proper safety um, safety is your accountability and your responsibility look at your equipment, look at the stuff that you're working on, and follow the safety uh, guidelines that come with what you're working with. So uh, that's on you. All right, hope you guys have a good one. Take care.